At the outset of tonight's episode of The Blacklist, Reddington is awakened by a visitor. Weecha. He wants a relationship while she insists he hire a bodyguard. She removes her coat, gives him a kiss, and wishes him well. Red, sometimes known as Pinky, pays Agnes a visit and delivers her ballet slippers, complimenting him on their beauty. After Cooper inquires about Red's night's rest, Red reveals that he fought off an invader and ultimately succeeded. Before Red can find safety for himself, he asks if he might borrow Dem for a few days. Cooper explains that he did some investigating and found that the vessel in question belongs to Transwick International and that there are no warning signs on the company's manifest. Red emphasizes this point. No one knows that among those 11,000 containers, there are at least two that are not what they seem to be. Enteron Electronics is a Florida-based, mid-sized technology business. This fictitious firm has been meticulously constructed. The Morgana Logistics Corporation, a new company on their blacklist, is capable of such a massive operation. A criminal organization that focuses on passing off fake businesses as real ones. Morgana has made thousands of different worlds, with Transwick and Enteron being only two of them. Morgan obtains official paperwork and creates identities for staff and upper management. If the task force is successful in eliminating Morgana, a major criminal organization in the United States will be crippled. Cooper informed the task team that Dem had joined Red as a temporary replacement until Red can secure security. After that, he gives them the most recent information about Morgana. Cooper informs Malik and Ressler that he will obtain a search warrant for the containers if they go to the port immediately. Congressman Arthur Hudson is not given up, he has scheduled a meeting with FBI Special Agent Jordan Nixon, whom Hudson refers to as a bloodhound. He hears from Hudson that the task force is one of the government's largest spending initiatives, but he is unable to locate any information on them. Nixon suggests there might be a valid explanation. A fair level of openness is what Hudson is looking for. Even with Dorf's assistance, he was used as a pawn. Nixon has been elected. Ressler issues the mandate at the harbor to open a few containers. The first one is smuggled French Bordeaux. Once back at the post office, Malik informs Cooper that they have evidence that Enteron has been distributing illegal substances around the county, albeit exactly what and how much remain unknown. After doing some further research into the firm, Cooper orders Malik to meet with the accountant who did the company's taxes after Herbie locates the accountant. Mr. Conklin, their accountant of many years, attests that Entreon is very much genuine. She claims that when they broke into the Tampa Bay office, nobody was there. Conklin claims to have just dined with Jaspiner's vice president of East Coast Operations, Roger Barrett. Barrett used a credit card, but not from Enteron, from Northmeyer Incorporated, and they had an office address in D.C., which the task force was able to locate after a bit more investigation. For further investigation, Cooper dispatches Ressler and Malik. Dem went around the outside and reported that it was clear to Red. Red informs Dem that he has run out of guesses when Dem inquires about the intruder from the previous evening. Red challenges him to a game of banana grams, saying that he will reveal everything if he can win. When Ressler and Malik arrive at Northmire with their SWAT squad, they find a warehouse with only one man inside but several workstations and filing cabinets. Herbie claims the location is priceless, as it served as a hub for the fabrication of fictitious American corporations. Herbie claims it will take centuries to sort through the tens of thousands of firm files to determine which are legitimate. Malik and Ressler study a map on the wall and come to the conclusion that Morgana is potentially the country's greatest criminal operation due to the extensive network of shipping channels it controls. The man Ressler has in jail won't reveal his identity, although he was found with a license in the name of an individual named Jerome Kavanaugh and an address in Bethesda. However, neither Kavanaugh nor his company appear to exist. Ressler assures him that he won't need an alias in prison. And Ressler assures him his employer will hunt him down no matter what he does. This man is refusing to talk and instead insists on being sent to central booking. After Red's defeat, Dem hears that Weecha was his guest. According to Dem, Weecha is not a trespasser. The doorbell rings, and there's Andrea Athens, a jack of all trades, as Red puts it. She inquires as to how she may be of service. He's planning a celebration with his closest friends and family, which will include between 25 and 30 people. When Red calls Cooper, he informs him they found a mound of evidence and are making progress. One person was arrested, 
but he won't reveal his identity, the site was deserted. Send him what you have, Red says, and he'll figure out who you are. When Nixon revisits his old friend Hudson, he reveals that the task force is just as mysterious to the CIA as it is to Nixon. He has a clue, and Nixon provided a thread that may help explain Cooper's actions. Cooper gets a call from Red, the man in prison is identified as Henri Guillaume, and so on, he goes by a dozen different names, so nobody is sure who he is. His photo appears on at least 10 passports, all of which have different names and locations. While Schaefer is out to lunch, Hudson stops by the restaurant to surprise him with an envelope. For FBI assistant directors met for a secret meeting. The pastrami sandwich, Skifar claims, is ruined. Hudson said he has begun investigating the matter. Schaefer warns him that if he continues to push the issue, the Attorney General will be in touch with him. When Hudson walks away, Skifar opens the package to find nothing but white space. Kirby followed the Phantom's passports and discovered that they all originated in Paris, suggesting that this may be the Ghost's headquarters of operations. To make a connection, the Ghost would visit the headquarters of a firm called LTNZ Unlimited, which is guarded by armed security personnel. After receiving no warning, Paris, Ressler, Malik, and their crew burst into LTNZ Unlimited and find the place deserted, with computers and paperwork strewn about. Cooper informs Red that the Parisian warehouse appears to be the epicenter of what may be the largest case he has ever handed them. They now know the precise locations of all of their outposts thanks to the digital maps they discovered. The ghost was taken to central jail, where a judge set bail at an outrageously high sum. Before Red can send Dem off, Dem asks him why he wanted to come along. Red claims that Cooper was concerned for him and sought him out for companionship. Dem admits that he feels the same way. When Red contacts Helen Swinson, he explains that he is in need of her services since he was recently arraigned in court and he has to get out of jail immediately. They will also require an absurd sum of money to post bail. Cooper receives a call, and the phantom suspect posts bail in the amount of $3 million. Red meets the phantom suspect outside the jail as he is being released and orders him to enter the waiting automobile. Red takes him to the Morgana Logistics Corporation's party and urges him to help himself to a beverage. Red appreciates everyone's presence and reports that although the FBI has ordered the closure of Morgana, their staff members are secure. He had anticipated the attacks and prepared food and drink for himself and everyone else at the gathering. Morgana is one of his organization's crowning successes among the many businesses he has created and managed. It's an engineering feat on par with the pyramids, a hidden wonder of the globe the most intricate and advanced delivery system ever created. Transporting more products per year than the GDP of certain developed nations. He says it's hard to think they're done working together after all these years because it was more than business, it was their life, and he feels privileged to have been there with them. With the wealth he has amassed and will be dividing among his partners, no one will ever have to work again. He urges them to take part in the festivities and have fun with the games and the music. Hudson is familiar with Dem, he has a picture of the latter standing next to a car in which Reddington appears. Raymond Reddington recruited a friend to join the investigation team. He is also well-versed in Keane, Agnes, and Wrestler. The path to Reddington is clear, 